Hello and welcome back to part two of my setup guide towards the DS1019 Plus from Synology. Do check out my previous video about RAID, setting, uh, RAID settings, about IP settings, about shared folder settings and basically getting the device ready for the first time. Today I want to talk about user groups, privileges and of course how is the best way to set up the security protocol for your users on your NAS. Maybe you're buying it for your home, maybe you're buying it for business, but either way, chances are you're not the only one accessing it. And each individual user needs to have their own login credentials to keep things safe. So we're gonna move over to back to the Synology and then we're gonna look at the best ways to set up those shared groups, individual users, and privileges and security rights. Okay, so here we are back on the DSM interface of our 1019 Plus to talk about users and groups. Now, at the beginning, we did already create an admin account during setup. This admin account was designed so you've got full unlimited access and setup to the NAS. But maybe you've got family members, maybe you've got work and team members, maybe you've got an entire arrangement of staff and management in your company and you want them to have their own logins as well as a tiered approach to access and storage. So what we need to do is head over to the control panel. From the control panel, we've got these two options here, user and groups. <clears throat> user will let you create individual users and group will let you create groups, so teams. If you've got a bunch of people that work in finance, a bunch of people that work in sales, a bunch of people in marketing, you can give these people their own bespoke logins and file level access. So for now, let it create an individual user. Now, right now, we've got the guest account that's always um, available on the NAS, and you can disable, disable it or enable it when needed, and the admin account. For now, let's create a standard user. We're gonna give this person a name. We're gonna go with Adam. You can say what they do. So they work in marketing. Again, his wife, lovely wife, two children, doesn't matter. You can enter their email address, which can be used for a greater capacity of security and more, as well as generate a password for them. Now again, just for ease, we're gonna go with the same as before, just the word password. We can create a notification email, so this person knows they've got a login, once you give your email address, and you can disable them from being able to change their information. But don't worry, even if they do, an admin can reverse it. So for now, we click next, and we can say what kind of user admin is. So for now, we're gonna make him just a standard user. We're not gonna make him all powerful admin. Just a standard user. And from here, we've only created the one shared folder. So we can say whether they have absolutely no access and they can't see it, or that they can both see it and edit it, or that they can only see the files, read the files, but can't delete any or add anything. Let's give him full access. Click next, and then you can say, what is their storage limit? You can say how much of their storage they're allowed to utilize. For now, there's no limitation, but you can disable or give them a finite amount of storage space on that volume we created earlier. Again, I'm gonna leave it unlimited for now. Finally, you can say with the apps you've got installed, how many of these apps they can utilize and to what degree. So for now, let's say this person can access the file structure, but nothing else. And that's it. We've now applied these group settings to these different things, as well as other ones as well. We click next, and there we have Adam, our new marketing man, who's got a new job in the company, and we're creating his account. Now, let's go through that and create two more users. Let's go with Barbara. And Barbara, she's gonna work in sales. Her password, rather um, unimaginatively, is going to be password. We're gonna create the same user. We're gonna give them the same level of access. And exactly the same settings. It's gonna be exactly the same thing, but she is gonna have access to everything. From there, we'll carry on. And she works in sales and we've given her a greater degree of control because maybe her files are very, very important. Finally, we'll create a final account and we'll call this guy Colin. So 
sorry about the clicking there on the keyboard everyone the mic is remarkably close to this move forward we'll give them read-only access to the my share and we're not going to give them any limitations and for now we're only going to let them access DSM and file station and have those privileges so for now we've created three users all of these users can log into the DSM software with their own login so we've created admin uh, part of it. so if we log out and how about if we use Adam's login well, we use Barbara's why not so if we log out of this device we'll get back to the login screen and for now let's put in Barbara And now we're logging into the device as Barbara. And of course she has a lot more access, but she doesn't have true admin rights. So straight away, a lot of the options are already removed for her. She can't add applications. She can't add users. All she's got is those standard user interface options that we've given her, but we haven't given her all power of the admin. So if we log out again, this time we'll go back into the admin account. <coughs> And once we make our way back in, we'll have all of those admin options back for us to play with. We'll log out, don't worry about those uh, user analytics. So, we've worked out now how to create users. But what if you've got loads of users? Well, there's two things you can do. First and foremost, if you have an existing CSV file of all of your existing database of users, you can upload a CSV to this. But for now, what you can do is create these new user groups. So say we'll go once again for the sales team. So if we just go for um, union. So these are people who we're going to say are working within the union at this company. Now with these rights, you can move people into these groups. And these groups, you have tailored control in the same way you had to individual users. So you can drag people into this group say such as team members and staff and these people will have these rights which will be added to their existing rights if they don't have them already so say you move a person around your company into different departments and within three or four seconds you can de defaultly say who the members are so you go to edit members and for now you can start adding some of these people so say we want to add Barbara and Colin now Barbara and Colin are going to be moved into the union. Poor old Adam wasn't in the union. And that's it, it really is that straightforward to add people to these groups. Because now you can change and alter a whole group of people's admin and administrative um, abilities as well as their permissions as a group as opposed to individual users. Now we're going to wrap things up here, I'm going to move on to the next video, but before I do, I do want to take a quick moment to talk about apps, because I talk about apps a lot in other videos, so I didn't really want to hit on it too much, and in the future videos coming up, I will be looking at user case scenarios, as well as people uh, the best applications for different usages. But, in order to install an app, it really is that straightforward. You go into the App Center, they're here, and you just click one. So say for example, you want to use something like Chat, which lets all the users communicate in a similar fashion to Skype or WhatsApp and can be installed on mobile devices and used over the internet, you just click install. If there are extra apps needed to make an, uh, make an application work, it will install them in the background. <clears throat> and that really is as simple as that. On top of that, while these apps are being installed, different users who have admin rights can install apps themselves, but the people we created early that didn't have admin rights can't install these packages. So I do recommend when you've got your 1019 Plus to go through the package center to give you a better idea of what your NAS can do. But otherwise I'm going to wrap things up here and move on to the third part of our videos and I will see you on that video.